So the title says insects, but in actuality, we're going to be talking about arthropods, which they um, are invertebrate animals and they have an exoskeleton, uh, segmented bodies, jointed appendages, um, and they are from the phylum arthropoda. Uh, and they include insects, arachnids, myriapods, and crustaceans. So what is an insect, like the title says, it's a class of invertebrates within the arthropod phylum. Um, they have chitinous exoskeletons, three-part bodies, which is the head, thorax, and abdomen. And they also have three pairs of jointed legs, compound eyes, and one pair of antennae. So for this webinar, we're going to have both insects and then insects that are in the arthropod uh, family. Uh, we have other creepy crawlies and all sorts of things to talk about today. Now they can be used for behavioral lessons. Some make just great classroom pets, but uh, I will be talking about all that. So next up we have reticular terms. These are Eastern subterranean termites. Um, they're the most common termites found in North America. Now they are the ones that are considered pests. So when you think termite and destroying houses, these guys are definitely the ones that will eat uh, any wood, um, any fixtures, even paper, um, books, and cotton are in danger. Um, a mature colony in the wild is anywhere from 20,000 workers to as high as 5 million workers. Um, actually, the queen of the colony can lay between five to 10,000 eggs per year. Now, on that note, I want to say that we do not send out queens, so there is no worry of them reproducing. Um, they do come, they are, have a structure of a caste system and they co are composed of males and females, but they are um, workers, soldiers, and reproductives. Um, when we send these out, they are, predomin they are predominantly um, workers. And I will now dump them out to show you a little bit, see if we can take a look at these guys. So the workers are about three millimeters long. If we can go to the small camera, please. Uh, this might be a little bit difficult to see because they are very tiny. Can you see that? Want to switch cameras? Yes, please. Yep. Can you, uh, let's see if I can zoom in. Can you zoom in? You can see them crawling around. You can't really see them too well. There we go. Now you can see those. Those are the workers. Now, um, like I said, they're about three millimeters long. Um, wingless, um, they are soft bodies and like they're usually this uh, whitish color, sometimes they are also gray. Um, let's see if we can find, they of course are walking around here. There's a bunch right here. Let's see if I can lift that up a little bit more. I apologize for this. <laughs> um, so, and you do on occasion find soldiers. They only make up about one to two percent of a colony, so it's very rare to find them. Um, those guys are also wingless, but they would have a bigger head and they would have these pincers that they actually use as uh, defense for um, crushing um, ants, um, which are their main enemies. Um, they also um, have a sticky fluid they can um, emit to trap the ants before they um, try and kill them. Um, but like I said, it's very rare to find them. Uh, when we send these out, you will get predominantly workers. And it's you pretty much impossible to find the um, reproductives, which would be tiny black versions of this guy right here. Um, uh, and they would also be winged. But like I said, you will get workers. Now, what's really awesome about these guys um, is we're going to stay here. We're going to see if this will work. Oh, I lost my camera. There I am. So we do have a kit, if we go to the next slide, please. It's called Follow the Ink Lab. So what this comes with, um, these termites actually will, let's see if I can get them on here, it's a little bit difficult to wrangle. So I draw a line. And as you can see, they follow the ink. Now, ooh, come here. If they, this guy's coming back. There we go. Um, now what that is, is that because worker termites are blind, they actually emit a pheromone that indicates the path that it is traveling. Um, so what happens here in this lab is students will see that a big pen will actually um, kind of mimic that pheromone and the termites will follow that line that you, you, you create or they create. Now the kit, um, you know, you can 
use different types of pens. Students can hypothesize if maybe the straight lines or the swirly lines are easier to follow, um, different types of paper. So students can really, um, you know, get really um, into the science of this and try to figure out why exactly it is that these termites follow this line. I don't know if we could see them. I put a couple more on there. As you can see, there, it's a, it's, I mean, for, for the most part, they do follow the line. They might be following each other's sense too, but if I make this a little thicker, these guys. So the kit comes with everything you need, you need um, brushes and, and stuff too to, to wrangle these guys in because it's a little bit difficult at times, as you can see. Um, is, we do, yes? Is there a substitute for these termites in case your state cannot, uh, they cannot be shipped to your state? Um, no, I, I don't believe so, but that's another thing I'll have to look into. Um, we do have a different type of termite, but I don't think that that's something we could send out. Excuse me, can we please press star six to mute? They're getting a little bit of feedback. Thank you very much. We have another question also. Sure. Um, is there a substitute critter that I could use with the same lab with the paper mate pen? Um, sadly, no. This is the only one that um, has the pheromones. I'm sorry. There, there's a little bit of feedback. If we can all press star six to mute. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Getting back to that question. There is none that I know of. I'm, I'm getting really bad feedback. I apologize. Is everyone on mute, please? Okay, there we go. <laughs> so, where was I? They, we do not have anything um, similar to this. The termites um, is the only thing we carry, as far as I know, that will will do follow the pheromones. Um, and the uh, the we do have Zootermopsis termites, but they they don't do the same thing. Nor do we have the kit for that. So I apologize um, that we don't have a replacement for them. Um, if we go to the next slides, I can. I just mentioned the Zootermopsis. Um, so we do have Zootermopsis termites as well, which is a species of dampwood termite. Um, these guys you can actually use for a symbiosis lab. So if you don't want to do the follow the ink lab, and I'm not sure about your state's restrictions on termites versus the other termites, uh, you could do that lab, which um, then you can look at the uh, flagellates inside of the termite um, under a microscope, which is a really interesting lab for students to do as well. If you just want to have these guys in your classroom just to watch them, how their behaviors, talk about the cast system, we recommend using some moist rotting wood, which we also have, um, uh, you can get, and um, an escape proof container with holes for oxygen. So they do need that oxygen exchange, but I would recommend really pin sized holes or even a fabric to cover up the holes so these guys can't get out because they will build a tunneling system and um, they can reach the lid even though their substrate will be low enough away from the lid. Um, but that is it for the, the, uh, the reticular termites. Um, the <clears throat> question is, sure. if you draw a circle, will they keep following the circle over and over Let's and over Let's check again? it out. Let's see if I can do it right here with this guy. <laughs> so the answer is yes. <laughs> I mean, like I said, he's, this guy's probably, he's smelling the other paths of the other termites, but they do, they, I mean, this one's going back, went back to the line as well. So they do kind of, um, they don't really know what they're doing. They'll, they'll continue following it, thinking that it's uh, one of their other workers indicating a path to somewhere.